Yeah. Intro. That's pretty oh, incredible, yeah, it... that intro. Uh, what's good, so good about it as well is it's so clear what this is. Oh, I mean, yeah. it, it certainly catches everybody's attention, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the intro goes, it's like, whoa, I'm listening. What, what's happening? What? Oh, my God. The little dead 10 space, out of 10. Maybe that's like a out. good way to, to just get people's attention is to just every, like, 30 minutes go... And then, and then they'll be paying oh, What was that? Oh. I think your mic did not want to want us to hear <laughs> no, that. I did it not. Oh, your mic made that was... sound really strange. The problem is that I can't, if I try to get it, it'll probably just screw up. Well, it was, it was this like kind one of a, day, maybe. It was kind <laughs> of a, that kind of sound. I think that's your microphone, well, the crisp thing from Discord being like, I don't know what's happening. Like, you're just like, is this a background noise or is this a human being? <laughs> or is this an alien? Is he okay? Calm down. <laughs> Is he okay? Is he all right? <laughs> and then so, Discord gets up from the from the uh, from the bench and is tumbling forward and then screams no. Um, we've been doing the, uh, the Last of Us stuff, and we did Dead Space at a similar time. So John's here, joining us for a little bit of reading the messages you guys sent in and answering them. Uh, it just so hello, happens that happened. Nice to have you with us. Oh, thanks Start for off. having me here. It's kind of funny. The first one is, I wish Halo got treated with this amount of respect. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You could have been, like, you been like, oh, you mean because of the Halo you show versus the Dead Last Space, of Us? Or... It's like, yeah. no, I mean Dead Space versus <laughs> games that are Halo. It's like, yeah, that sucks. Uh -huh. Oh, poor, poor Halo. We were, uh, as a backup sort of thing, going to talk about that when Ackman came on, but we ended up talking about Dead Space basically forever because Dead Space is pretty neat. Um, according to most people, who I it. think it's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm actually, solid. Um, I'm almost through the new game plus. The only thing I've got left is finding the uh, marker pieces. Yep, got ten out of twelve. So I'm looking for any room. Pieces of twelve. Yeah, yes. And you know what? Eight. You know what needs a remake, remaster? Simpsons Hit and Run. I think someone's a fan has done that. A remake? A remake of Simpsons Hit and Run. Something like that, yeah. Or they, they've, they've... Oh, that's cool. ...worn it apart and rebuilt it to have, like, better graphics? I'm not sure. I, and, uh, oh, that's interesting. One thing I think they did was combine all of the maps. The one huge... Oh, map. I I'm sure I've seen that, actually, now that I think about it. Which is neat. I mean, dude, if they... Oh! Uh, if you they imagine made they did a Simpsons Hit and Run and they did that, like, yeah. with Dead Space, and yeah. it's a connected Springfield... I was about to say, like, <laughs> Dead Space. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, sit and run if they did it like Dead Space. <laughs> like, oh, dude, when did that game be... first come out? Like, Hit and Run came out like 2003. Yeah, okay. I think it was like 2002 or three because they right. made uh, they made Road Rage, which was a pretty cool game, but it was much more uh, focused in terms of like a linear. Uh, yeah, it's Crazy Taxi. Oh, yeah, pretty much. And then I think they looked at that and were like, "Oh, but Grand Theft Auto Three came out, and that's like the bee's knees. So let's do Grand Theft Auto, but." Uh, the Simpsons. Well, my hot it's kind of crazy, like how it... profoundly influential Grand Theft Auto Three really oh, yeah. was. <laughs> like that yeah. changed everything. My hot take is that Hit and Run is just better than Road Rage because it has Road Rage in it. There are a couple of missions. Uh, yeah, do people do people actually do people disagree? I thought everybody agreed that. Uh, I've that seen Road some Rage people say was... they prefer Road Rage. Really, I don't get it. It's just Road Rage, but also a whole bunch of extra stuff. Well, maybe Why they'd do you argue... think they would like it better. Maybe they'd argue well, that maybe the that's extra the stuff is lame. Uh, I mean, obviously I would disagree, but I guess I, guess I can understand that. Yes, I It reminds me of GoldenEye versus Perfect Dark. Like, GoldenEye's good, but, like, Perfect Dark does everything that GoldenEye does, plus way more. And, like, oh, yeah, yeah? Oh, crazy well, stuff like bots, oh, yeah. like, with pr different wow. AIs that you could put in. Like... Fine, then. <laughs> you know, the, uh, John, are you are you excited for this seemingly forever in development Perfect Dark reboot that's happening? Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, I remember hearing about that seventeen years ago. Yeah, I think there's like an E3 trailer like five years ago or something. So if I if I recall the timeline, Microsoft created a new studio called Initiative, which they dubbed as a quadruple A studio. Funnily enough, the Callisto Protocol they called that internally like a quadruple A game. So we're on a good track record so far on that front. Um, yeah. and that was a team that was made, and I think it had some guys, it, it had a whole bunch of veterans, and they announced it, and then, like, a year and a half passed, it's like, oh, the initiative has lost a lot of its employees, one of its leads is gone, and Crystal Dynamics is now coming in to, like, help make the game. 
And so I was like, oh, God, <laughs> like, that's, that doesn't sound very good. The whole team has kind of, like, disappeared, and now another studio is coming in to essentially make the game. Right. And it seems like at this point, who knows when that's going to... Who knows, right? That I, Apparently, Fable as well, the reboot has been having uh, development troubles as well. Oh, so, yeah. and then, reboot, then you have so Halo not... Infinite had the, the development troubles. I'm not sure what's going on with Microsoft Studios right now. It seems like uh, it seems like it's Bethesda that they're kind of relying on at the moment to actually like release games somewhat consistently. But I mean, who knows, right? Starfield is the big one. Um, that yeah, one probably has I've, to deliver. I've not been impressed by what I've seen, so hopefully it really shapes Me up. Me either. <sighs> um, but and then there's stuff that I've heard, like a thousand planets. It's like, so how many are there really? <laughs> there's like <laughs> what? There's probably like twenty. I would imagine, which is fine. I guess which it's is, just a problem yeah. if, like, I think that's okay if you give enough places on those planets. If you give to me explore, 20 like, good places to visit, I will be very happy. Especially yeah. if those places are, um, like, um, well, you just do like, variations on the 20. Right? Like, if 20 like, biomes, that would be, if, if they give us 10 oh, that'd biomes, cool. that would be legitimately impressive. That would be um, really cool if they did that. And if that, each one yeah, had like, their own, like, ha like, like Deep Rock Galactic, where you have all these different biomes, and they're all very unique and different from one another, not just visually, but in terms one of, of the, the stuff there. One of the benefits as well is, that I think, because Starfield is meant to have, like, different factions that are out across the galaxy, so you'd have some planets that are maybe, like, totally barren wilderness, or, you know... Or, you know, even, like, the moon, where it is, like, a totally barren, but it's got a bunch of caves and formations around... And then you could have places that have establishments or space stations, which I imagine is what they're going to do. It's just that, um, what was the last Bethesda Game Studios game was Fallout 76, I think. That was their last Horizon, game. No. Uh, and people didn't like it very much. And now it's been nearly six years, and now what's up to Starfield, which is new. Like, it's a new thing, so it kind of has to deliver, I would imagine. I think and from beyond Microsoft's bad... perspective. It was a huge blunder for them, wasn't it? Like, just the uh, bugs were Fallout embarrassing. And... Their, yeah. <laughs> that was, yeah. Uh, that yeah, was it a, really that was damaged a big, their image, big bad thing for them. And I will so say, uh, I've got friends who, like, play it now, today. So I guess they've put a lot of work into it, and they say it's good, and they have fun playing okay. together. So, you know, I'm, I'm willing to believe that work's been put into that game. Because the skeleton, the, the, the concept of that game is a, is a fine one. There's nothing wrong with that. I think there, there's, like, NPCs and stuff in it now. So, hey, what happens? Uh, Snowy movie game? Yes. <laughs> love I agree. Love the Leviathan boss fight in the remake. Um, I did, too. I just wanted it to be heartier. Yeah, it needed to be more. Uh, having played the first two Dead Space games, this game was probably the first time I used every gun in a single playthrough. It was fun. Something I found on New Game Plus was that, um, I think focusing on the plasma cutter almost entirely is just, it, it might rank up there in terms of just a good strategy for actually beating Yeah, them. it just gives you, yeah, because the game weighs the ammo that you pick up depending on what you're carrying. So if you're only carrying one or two weapons, you're only going to get one or two kinds of ammo, and... You know, it. And if one of your weapons problem. is really, really, well, really, really, is, really like, good, the familiarity you can gain with the plasma cutter, so that you're prepared no matter what with whatever enemy. And I think you brought it up, Rags, but like the few times that something gets real close, or maybe there's two enemies and you don't know what to do, it's like you can pull out a force gun, backup, or a contact beam, um, or a line gun. You could really make anything your secondary. Even the Ripper could probably do the job, but. Um, yeah, the, the plasma cutter, 90% of the encounters, you'll be fine as long as you know how to aim. I jumped in towards the end of one of your playthroughs, and you seem to be doing quite well with that OP plasma cutter build. You had a <laughs> shitload of ammo. Like, yeah. wow, how does he have so much ammo? It's, I guess if you're just carrying the one gun, like you were saying, Rags, like it only gives you that type of ammo, usually, if that's all you have. They do give you some other ones sometimes, but cycle it all out anyway and sell it. Sell what you don't want, yeah. Um, hi, Rags. Hi. Other than Scrappy Doo and Dog Meat, what dogs do you have beef with? Lassie, Clifford, Old Yeller? Um, I don't really have any beef with dogs, honestly. Um, the the reason that I don't like Dog Meat is just because of uh, Bethesda's terrible programming and like general AI. 
Um, Dogmate will constantly get in the way. Uh, you collide with him, so you can't just walk through him. So Dogmate often will stand in fucking doorways like a dumb person. He will uh, constantly walk right in front of you as you are looting things. It's like that dog was designed to constantly get in your way and annoy you. And when he finds something that's interesting, quote unquote, and, and like leads you to it, it can be just worthless garbage. Like, ooh, wow, thanks, thanks for bringing me all the way out here to this pool queue, de dog meat. That that was really, really useful. I'm gonna go back to what I was doing. Is that on purpose um, to try and be like, see, it could be like a real dog might find that. It well, I'm I'm sure it, it's probably purposeful. Yeah, in the sense that he leads you to stuff, but it, the, I guess the the range of items that it can bring you is too broad in the same way that like you were talking about fable, right? How, Oh wow. The dog found something. Oh my gosh. What's in here. I, I can't wait to dig it up. Oh, it's a condom. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, okay. I was going to say, I'm with you on that. Uh, the example I will give forever is last guardian where it's like, it's this clash of making something realistic and making something worthy for game mechanics. They don't always mesh. Um, the reason for that, and there's a reason why. You know, like the classic one, I think maybe to explain it to everybody is when you reload a gun, you've got like three shots left and you reload. There's a reason why a lot of games don't toss out that three ammo, even though it technically should. Hardcore games do, and uh, you can appreciate that, and it can add to the experience. Uh, oh, ammo pool. Uh, yeah, mm. hardcore. So there's a decent amount of hardcore games and hardcore settings where, yeah, it removes the ammo pool. But it's like, why don't uh, they do it in all games? games? Like, uh, a lot of people just because that would annoy you. Annoying. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, annoying. It, it would be really annoying. People would, uh, it, it it would just fundamentally change the way that you play shooter games. Stuff like Arma and DayZ, you will keep the magazine. Um, I know, like in Tarkov, you can do a quicker reload where you drop the magazine on the ground, or you could do a normal reload where you keep the reloaded magazine or the the old magazine and it goes back into your inventory and then you could sort out the bullets and magazines later whenever you want but it's just yeah. it's a complication that people are just not used to and it, it's just not as fun in an arcadey sense you just want to press r and you want to refill your magazine and that's essentially it um and, and it works good for a lot of things but what it means is that if you want a more hardcore option there is, you know, that set of mechanics that you can put into games like, you know, the Arma and Tarkov and things of that nature. You have an option to go upwards, essentially, when it comes to difficulty or mechanical complexity. Uh, as for dogs, I would say that if any game devs are watching this, um, make your dogs like Boomer from Far Cry 5. Make your dogs like D-Dog from Metal Gear Solid 5. Or Elizabeth's yeah, dog shock. Uh... Um, yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> but you don't want all these dogs do in these two games, uh, Boomer and D-Dog. They're great. Uh, you can tell them to do things if you want, but generally they just passively highlight enemies. They can be distractions. They never get in your way. You're not clipping into them. You're not colliding with their models. They're not getting in your way. They're there to support you and help you. And they do that role really well. You're never upset when they're around. They just make the game better for you. So those are what I would aim for. I think in Far Cry New Dawn, there was a, I forget the name of the dog in that one. Uh, Far Cry New Dawn dog. Timber. Yeah, he's great. So uh, yeah, Timber's an Akita, I think. For example, that was sort of like reach by the way, is, you know, you just spam E and you can pick up all the stuff around you in Dead Space. If you wanted to do that, um, imagine you had to play an animation each time of him kneeling down, searching a little bit for where the, the ammo is, and then grabbing it with his hand, standing back up and putting it in his pocket. <laughs> be like, you he me. <laughs> he's got dialogue every time, like, hmm, what's this? This could come in handy. Ah, ammo. Y'all, y'all remember? <laughs> y'all play the early Tomb Raider games? Tomb Raider Gold, Tomb Raider Two. I forgot. That's how it was. Uh, yep. Yeah, whenever you picked up an item in those games. You had to go over it, press the essentially interactor pickup key, and Laura would uh, bend down, pick it up, hmm, put it in her pack, and you'd you know carry on. And there was an animation for picking up things underwater as well. So picking up shit wow. underwater in those early games could have been could be a pain sometimes because you had to maneuver yourself like right over it. I thought you were gonna say right. there was a little bit trying to pick them up because you take so long. <laughs> you like drown. Uh, <laughs> Well, the game knew to put that shit in some places as um, as as like a, a tempting 
uh, looking uh, pickup where, yeah, there might be enemies chasing you or a trap or something, uh, and it took time to pick it up. In Tomb Raider 2, even in the very first level, the Great Wall of China, where you had to get through the, the Great Wall and all the traps and stuff, if you wanted to get the collectibles, the, the idols, of which there was, I think, jade, gold, and silver, I think, um, you would have to spend time getting in place over the item, going through the item pickup animation, all the while, like, literal spike walls could be closing in, and it, ga it, it gave a sense of tension to that game uh, that I'm sure the devs were aware of, so... You know, there's a place for it, but there's a reason we don't see it much. We could have a whole discussion on different games' versions of item acquisition and, you know, the animations and things, and it's, that's its whole thing to talk about. Yes, sir. Uh, the only tiny stain on the game, the stain on the game I can think of, is how they sped everything up in the animations and walking speed for both Isaac and the monsters, something you only notice if you play it back-to-back -back with the original. Sped up quite the animations, like the, or they just move faster? The movement speed is a little bit quicker, yeah. Movement and speed I, which is faster for fine. every interaction and every I mean, We anime, talked about which... how the game needs to be that way, otherwise it'd be way too easy. Like, yeah, yes. the there is a, it's like, um, I don't know, I don't know what the technical name for it might be, but when you're making a game and playing a game, you do notice that there is, in good games, in bad games, they'll do it either well or poorly, this, this, this relationship between the play area in terms of its space and how fast you could move and how fast the enemies could move. Um, if you wanted to, if you wanted to make an MMO and you wanted to, maybe everyone got a free mount like a horse or a raptor or a jackal or something like that you rode around in, then you would really need to design these maps with that in mind, knowing that every player has access to a faster moving mount. Whereas if you had a, an MMO where people didn't have those things and however fast you moved was however fast you moved, you could probably make the world a whole lot smaller so it didn't take forever to explore everything and you felt so slow. Uh... Rags joins the ATF in anti-doggo discrimination. No, very spe I, I name very specific examples. Scrappy and dog meat. And dog meat, just because Bethesda is bad at like AI like it's nothing, design. It's not stuff. really dog meat's fault. Where Scrappy yeah, I like shit. him. I like the it idea that Scrappy's you're out in the post-apocalypse and you have your faithful pooch there with you. It is like, I like that fault, idea. Yeah. But yeah, Scrappy is... Damn, that's Scrappy. <laughs> Did you like Bull Bullet and Blair Witch? Do you play that one? Anybody? Blair Witch? Wait, Blair Witch the game? Yeah, a yeah, game? yeah. I didn't even know they made a yeah. game. Yeah, they did. That was uh, Blue Blue. Blooper Team's thing. They came off Layers of Fear and they did that. Huh. Okay. Did they oh, now they're doing this. Massive controversy from stealing resources, assets. Oh, I don't know. They're the one Layers of Fear because it was a game I kind of liked, and then I remember watching a video breakdown how they stole like almost all their assets and. Shit. That could be oh, untrue. No. Go do a little research, everybody. But I would has I hesitate these days to be uh well to mention them without mentioning that because that is some dire shit for your uh. Your... Isn't that a controversy that's going right now with that one like post apocalypse game where pretty much everything in terms of so much of the assets are like copies of things and even the trailer is essentially a copy a bunch of of a bunch of other trailers down to like the color grading and the the shot and the camera angle things of that nature I suppose if when this comes out it, maybe someone away. can remind me but it's the the day before you're talking about right yeah about yeah it? yeah yeah i saw a i saw a tweet that had the day before his trailer next to where they got all the trailers from whether it was escape from tarkov or or arma or whatever other games and they had just essentially recreated other trailers in a just staggeringly similar way um and then just put it together and made it their own which is going yeah which is you don't get the excuse of it being an inspiration at that point right um yeah so there's a video from two years ago from oh it's bob vids Makes sense why I saw this video. It's called Blooper Team Bites. How the Layers of Fear dev team copied and pasted their way to notoriety. Mm. Yeah, and I remember it being pretty informative, so if you're curious about okay. what I just mentioned, check that. Well, I wonder if it was stolen assets or they just like 
bought a bunch of asset packs that a bunch of other people were also using and just used that because they were a small team at the time. It could be. I'll like, Obviously, I'll rewatch the video so I can get updated, but uh, I remember being annoyed when I saw it, so assuming it wasn't as simple as buying assets. Maybe. Rags, please tie Mola to a chair. Give him a feeding tube. Tie his hands to a controller until he finishes the Mass Effect trilogy plus MEA. Mahler has to play the Mass Effect trilogy. He has to play Hellblade. Yep. He has to play... Um, uh, God, what was the other one? Uh, there's a lot. There's probably, it's probably Witcher 2 and 3. Um, yep. I don't know anything about the first. I hear it's really old. Um, but God, there, there's the other one that I, God damn it. What is it? The one that you need to play that I'm curious to see what you think of. I don't know. It'll come to me. It's weird that I can't remember because it pops up every once in a while. I'll play it eventually. Don't worry. As I'm a sure. fan of the original Dead Space, I feel like the remake improves dialogue and will building. Also adding lore from the comics and movie shows passion. Absolutely. You can feel you can taste the passion in this remake absolutely I agree with that. Yeah. hey guys i finished dead space remake by beating the boss on my very last bit of pulse ammo lol pretty good game overall i'd say i agree i think it's great i do agree in the cancelled titanfall legends you would have played as blisk uh, supposedly and rampart would revive bt we need to bully ea into uncancelling it um so, like, Titanfall 2 is really good. I recommend oh, every one. single person buy it and play it. Is that it, Rags? Is that the one? No. Have you um, not played Titanfall 2? Oh, I've told you this before. Uh, okay. Yeah, you should play it. Single player is really, really good. Um, but the problem is Titanfall 2 didn't make money. Uh, so, I mean, you, under, you have to understand their hesitance to make another. Like, yes, it's very well regarded, but... you know, ain't good I, enough... Yeah, heard it had great single player and great multiplayer, and yeah, a lot of yeah. acc accolades. I don't know why it didn't do well financially. Because they released it between Call of Duty and Battlefield. Um, like legitimately, like there was like they on either side they were sandwiched in between Call of Duty and then Battlefield. It was Battlefield One and Call of Duty. I forget which one, but um, yeah, and I don't know why Respawn decided that's when they wanted to release their game, but apparently that's what they decided on, and absolutely ruined that game's ability to um yeah and and plus it it just i don't know travesty mm -hmm. bad faith uh do you have strong feelings about doom 16 2016 or uh or eternal um i really like doom 2016 a whole lot not just the single player but the multiplayer too which i'll actually kind of defend um Doom Eternal just didn't grab me. I just didn't really care for it in the same way. It just didn't. It, was, it just didn't have that something. I never stuck with it. One day maybe I'll go back and finish it, but I just didn't. I just wasn't feeling that game. Uh, I really love 2016. I never played Eternal. I meant to, but I just never. I really like both. I thought Eternal was frustrating, though. It's really easy to run out of ammo, and then there's a lot of times you're just running around looking for something desperately. Like, yeah. for a little guy to chainsaw, and then you'll get pickups from that. Yeah, I think I, I didn't like a lot of the creative decisions in terms of how the gameplay mechanics work in Eternal, whereas 2016, I feel like I could play to this day and really, really enjoy it. And Eternal yeah. just didn't... It just didn't work with me. I just kept rolling my eyes a lot through Eternal. I'd be like, ugh, I feel like this is just a lot of busy work in here. Um, I made it to the morgue on Impossible, then the game soft crashed and I didn't save at all. Ultimate pain. Though honestly, oh, despite man. playing on Linux, I'm surprised at how bug-free the game has been. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I found the same thing on PC though, but still. Probably would have been saved by an autosave still. Even if you didn't save uh, manually. No, because you can't load, remember, in Impossible. Oh, right. Okay. No yeah. auto saves. You get. You only get one manual save. Okay, wait. Yeah, there's so no, there's no auto a, saves in Impossible. Yeah. I have struggled to understand exactly what's happening with that difficulty, and a friend of mine was recently telling me about their playthrough. So correct me if I'm wrong, but wrong. it is the difficulty of hard, but you can save as many times as you want, but you can only die once. No. No, why? You can only save 
one time manually. There are no auto saves. If you die, you either revert back to the beginning of the game or your auto save. Or sorry, your manual save. For so oh. if you do not die, so if you do not die, there is no difference between a hard playthrough and an impossible playthrough. But if you die, you go back to the beginning of the game, or if you chose to make your one manual save for that run, you'll go back to that manual save. Um, I'm not sure it's either. What I had understood was that you get one save slot, but you can save as many times as you want on that no. one slot. Uh, oh, okay. No, that would be um, essentially virtually identical to any playthrough. Um, you can save as many times as you want. It's just like it, it it's just like a impossible mode in Dead Space 2, but instead of uh multiple saves, uh you only get one. Right. Yeah. And there are no auto saves. So you essentially you choose one checkpoint that if you die, you will go back to if you die. Mm. I'm gonna give me one second. Fucking the newest EFF TV episodes got hit with copyrights. Like, thanks. Doing it after. Really? It Love it when they do that. So, yeah, the reason why what I was going to say was um, uh, the friend of mine was saying that they saved multiple times and it didn't stop it from being impossible and they got the achievement. Are you sure? That sound, then what's the whole point of impossible? I, sa then? I said to them, well, what's the point? That sounds like uh, it's the same as hard. Are you sure they wouldn't? They said that as soon as you die, your save is poofed. Gone. So then you could just resave. So I said, could you just all F4 when you're like about to die? And they said, yeah, a lot of people have done that. That seems dumb. Why didn't I? The way that I read that is. That seems so strange. So obviously I'm going to try impossible mode soon enough and find out what the fuck the answer to this is, because I've been jostled around in all different directions as to what the fuck this difficulty means. <laughs> and you know what's funny is I would have way preferred if impossible would just Exact same as hard, you don't fuck with the saving system, and it's just um, harder enemies overall. And, you know, like the upgraded ones, and maybe even make them faster, add some new moves. That would have been really cool. And yeah, I've been excited other, to do it. Other Dead Spaces, they had not just hard mode, but like zealot mode on top of that. Uh, or survival, or something like, some along those lines, where it was even harder than the hard difficulty. I think even if you can save as many times as you want on one slot, not dying at all uh, is a challenge on its own. But you brought up something Mueller I didn't even think of, where you can just sort of, like, when, if you're dying, you just sort of quit the application and relaunch it, and it'll, like, your save won't have reverted from an impossible to a hard mode save. Like, you can still just keep playing, even if you die. Like, you can cheese it. Um... Yeah, uh, yeah I don't know. Uh, obviously I need to test all this stuff because I've heard lots of different things from lots of Yeah. And there I go, I submit the counter and it's probably not going to work, and goodbye. That vi well, luckily it doesn't affect the visibility of the video, that's seems... That's good. Uh... <laughs> I love your system, YouTube. I'll never not love it. Just brilliant. No. Oh. People acting like she looks like Viserys from episode 6. Uh, I think you mean episode... The 8? Episode 8 is... Uh... Well, well, I guess Viserys they're trying to say... Like real haggard. No, maybe they're trying to be deliberate by saying... Yeah, uh, I, I know. And it's just funny to me. Uh, uh, well, it's funny and then it's a little bit sad because they are talking about the woman who, who did the work for Nicole. So she's just like... Standing there like... I wonder if the devs have heard about that complaint at this point. <clears throat> um, I'm sure they point. have. How annoying that must be to know that's being discussed at length. Mm, like, more so than a lot of the other cool stuff you've done. Um, who are five of your favorite characters? Mine are Viserys, Thor, Joker, Phasma, JK, and Silco. Phasma? <laughs> well, they said JK, but then they didn't give another fifth, so... JK, Phasma? Um... Some of my fa I mean, you named some of my uh, favorites there. I really liked a lot of those guys. Um, I, of course, I really like uh, Boromir and Faramir, 
and Sam and Lord of the Rings. Um, and of course, my favorite character from Rings of Power, who is uh, Durin, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I let me see. Hmm. Well, since there were so many carryovers between those two, you know, they named a lot of really good ones. I mean, um, you know, favorite characters of old time. There were some classics in there, right? Like uh, Luke Skywalker. I mean, v- Vader is unironically one of one of the coolest characters ever in terms of just uh, that, that journey he went on. If you take it, you know, even with the bumps in, in the prequel trilogy, if we try and smooth it out a bit. I mean, are we, I mean, forgive me if I just don't remember and I had short-term memory loss, but were there any God of War characters in there that they'd mentioned? Uh, well, so they said Viserys Thor, which could be God of War Ragnarok. It could, also be, could be, yeah. Be Thor well, from mythology. Hey, if we're talking God of War, man, I think like Sindri and uh, Brock Sindri, uh, Jesus, do I have to just keep going through all the character <laughs> lists in that game? Just anyone who is featured in God of War Ragnarok, essentially. Well, that's the thing. Kratos is one of my all-time favorites at that point. Mm. That game, I was like, I'd like to have a beer with that guy. That's what people say when they like a guy, right? Do you not like? Uh, do you not really like Tazi from Amnesia Rebirth? Is she not one of your favorites? Favorite? Oh, character? she's on the list. She's near the bottom, but she's on there. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, on the bottom. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, what about I mean, you, John? Yeah. What about you, Fringy? Both of you. Go. What is the list? Again. Favorite characters. Favorite characters. Uh, like in general, or? What it says, yeah. Yeah. Favorite characters in general. Yeah, you go first. I'm not sure. I need to. It's we're not. not sure. We're not talking about Lord of the I Rings really... exclusively, are we? This what? is just <laughs> across everything? Yeah. Just... <laughs> okay. Well, you could say, I, like, I Cortana know. from Halo, you know? She's or, really cool. Master Chief really from Halo. <laughs> or the Arbiter from Halo. John Halo is my Sergeant, favorite character. Sergeant Johnson from Halo. <laughs> or the or Halo ring from Halo. Grunt 493B from Halo. Sure we yeah. answered this question like pretty recently. I feel like I, I'm sure that we answered a question similar to this pretty recently. Of, so like, it'll be fresh account. in your mind. Yeah, you must have a great answer. Wow, well, yeah. okay. Because well, you I haven't thought about it much since then. And yeah, it's one of those uh, it's one of those questions where people are like, well, well, of course it's easy to answer. And they're like, well, actually, you know, no, because you have a tough. lot to. Yeah, you got a lot to pull from and you want to pull really good ones. A part of the problem as well is that some of my favorite characters is like, what well, do you think that they're like incredible characters? Like Homer Simpson is one of my favorite characters. And it's like, well, how would you stack them up compared to, you know, someone like Kratos? It's like, that doesn't seem fair. <laughs> well, we've got ourselves some really uh, from some fresh ones here. I mean, I really love uh, the wolf from Puss in Boots and uh, Perito, and uh, I really himself. like yeah Puss in Boots himself, and you know Goldilocks and Three Bears are all great. Um, just uh, there needs to be like that honorable mention for sometimes there's pieces thought... of media where there's kind of like a whole cast of really good characters. Oh, I was gonna say Buzz. like Buffy and Angel have like ten at least I would name, but. People who shows. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot from that show. Um, uh, not just because we're talking about Dead Space here, but like Isaac Clark for me is honestly really up there. Like I just love I that like he's an lot. everyman, cool and dude. I love how efficient he is, and he's not like a badass action hero. And like I, I, I liken him to like on the level of like Ripley from Aliens or something like that. Just, yeah. um, but like, like I feel like. Isaac would be more neglected because he's like a video game character, but I think he deserves to be alongside characters like Ripley as like a sci-fi action hero. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna say I, I really like Tabe from uh, Prey, uh, the brother character. He was a legitimately really awesome uh, dude. He was the he was the hero of that movie. And there's a lot to like about how he interacts with the other people around him, uh, how he behaves, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, throwing Tywin home. Yeah, you showed me a lot of great Tywin clips. <laughs> well, Viserys is pretty... Uh... Yeah, definitely. Uh, obviously, <laughs> he was in the suggestions up. as well, but... 
That's probably a decent amount of them, and next time we're asked, mm -hmm. we'll try and say some more, maybe. Uh, will EFAP cover the 1991 Dead Space movie? Are they talking about Event Horizon? 1991? It must be Event Horizon he's talking about, yeah. Obviously the IP um, wasn't made then, but... I don't know, maybe. Oh, well, I think Event Horizon... I need to see it anyway, so... Oh, no, Event Horizon's 97, so it's not that. Oh, okay. To that, well, there was Dead Space. There was like a a a cartoon, an animated cartoon. I don't know why I said animated cartoon, but there, uh, but it, it's sort of like a prequel to the events of Dead Space. Whoa, I forget oh. what it's called, like Extraction, I think. Or... There's an actual movie called Dead Space from 1991. The description is a deadly virus attacks the crew of a Saturn space station. I'm guessing. Oh, nice. It's just a science fiction thing. We gotta check it out. We gotta I check gotta out watch Dead that. Space yeah. 97. Okay, it looks like there's some some real creepy creatures in this. All right. Okay. How have I not heard of that? Uh, Brian Cranston's in it. <laughs> what? <laughs> Dr. Really? Frank what? Darden. Commander Steve Krieger. Dr. Marissa Salinger. We got, we got, we got a whole, st that, that, I mean, it's rated at 3.4, but I'm sure it's great. Out of 10, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah. Three out of 10? I'd watch the four hell out, out of, of that. That sounds great. Hey, Which, you know, you can round that up to 3.5, and you can round that up to 4. Yeah, 3 point, yeah, that's right. It's practically 5. That's almost 6. And then if and you round that up, it's 10 out of 10. Not bad. 10, really. Yeah. yeah. You just do a little rounding just for simplicity's sake. Yeah. <laughs> I'm almost very tempted to see that now. It's probably crap. <laughs> Hang on a second. You guys are going to see this. Because, you know, the... Uh, the, the iconic, I think I'm happy to say iconic uh, image for Dead Space, the hand in space, you know. This is the poster yeah. of the movie. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> that looks so Doesn't that look like it's a parody of Dead Space? Yeah, it, it looks like a stop motion parody. It this looks is, like he's giving a thumbs up. I think it's it supposed to be scary. I don't think it's supposed to be comedy. <laughs> Let me check, actually. If it's horror comedy, this could be even better. Um... He looks like he's, yeah, he's like having a chill time out there. <laughs> he's a skeleton hanging out in space. Well, that's just, I think that's probably how I would do it if we wanted to make fun of Dead Space. That would be a really great poster. <laughs> uh, but no, it is a science fiction horror film. It's not. But, um, all right, well, you know, maybe we'll pop that on the maybe pile. Would you decompose like that in a spacesuit out yes. in space? 100%. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know what sure would happen. I, so I'm pretty sure. Hundred percent. Do, do uh, so I actually, man, it's gonna. I I feel like I'm stupid for saying I don't know. I feel like I should know what the answer. Is. <laughs> I, feel, I don't know. I don't think it'll be. This isn't what we call applicable knowledge. Um, <laughs> well, I'm not sure. I, mean, I, I, I guess I'm trying to figure out the like, flash, isn't it? I guess oh, I'm trying to figure out the deduction, right? Because if it's in space, then it's exposed to just vacuum. As opposed to, I mean, that'd still be like light, I suppose. I don't know what difference that makes. And what is what is it with temperature? Is it colder means that you colder means that it preserves faster, uh, pre preserves longer, right? Isn't that how it yeah. works? Yeah, yeah. So I presume it would take longer than if it was in like Miami, <laughs> you know, just sitting <laughs> out there on the beach. Yeah, Miami space. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't know. Miami I feel either. like I should, and I feel stupid for saying I don't know, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um. I like Mercer's death overall. However, I'm a little disappointed we didn't find down where the marker is a fuse to the wall in agony, and it's our choice to let him live or kill him. That would have been neat. Um. Well. Uh. Well, Fringy, what do you think about that? Uh. I, the problem is, I'm just, I'm, I'm totally okay with what they, what they presented because to me, it just seems congruent with what they were doing. Build well, the reason up I asked like you. Because I feel like yep. that suggestion would be incongruent with their goal of what they were doing with Mesa. Well, yeah, because the whole thing that they were building... Well, just say it for me one more time what the, the choice was. You'd have it be so that um, you go down and he's in agony, fused to a wall, and you can choose whether or not you want to kill him. No, that... Yeah, that does feel incongruent with me. I think... I think... Um, I think... I think what, what, what happened, I guess, to lay it out again, because we kind of talked about it, that built up Mercer as having essentially cultivated this attitude towards the necromorphs and the markers, like this big mythos that's going to be grand and awesome. 
Uh, and then in the face of that, Mythos is created, like, this stark reality. It's just totally unceremonious because, like, everything is created, he just made up. It's just not relevant to, like, the Marker or the Necromorphs or any of that at all. And so, like, it seems really poetic that he built that up and then his death is, like, sort of just a byproduct of, of the Necromorph and Markers and everything, just, like, doing things. <laughs> like, just doing things and advancing their own objectives that he just dies um, unceremoniously while they're in the process of doing that. I feel like that's pretty ideal uh, in terms of, like, an ending. And if somebody was presenting alternatives, it's like, I feel like they're unnecessary. I feel like this is it. This is pretty good. This is a pretty good ending for that character. I've been convinced more so over to it over time, uh, especially thinking about it. Because I'm running all these scenarios in my head, right, of, like, why do we... Why would we value something grand of him? And it's like, well, because of his involvement in the storyline we want something bigger and it's like but his story is specifically about how he's he you know he's on top of it all he is the big man he's the bossy blah 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 and it's just like he gets to realize in that split second before he dies that he, he was nothing he was meaningless and he is irrelevant in, in in everything including the story um in a sense the at least to the marker and, and all that shit that was going on and uh, hence why it it's like it's supposed to generate that experience, but it has purpose. Kind of a complicated thing. We've talked about this before, but when uh, generating an unsatisfying feeling that like the unsatis the the dissatisfaction is the satisfaction in a sense. Yeah. Do you uh, think that there's something we said about he gets turned into a necromorph and it's a terrible No, because horrible... I think I don't know. Um I, I think I, I think I like that he doesn't even get to find out. Um like he doesn't it's it's he doesn't even get anywhere close to what he thought he wanted. I get what you mean though, like right, you you could do a payoff that he this is what he thought he wanted and it was absolutely horrible, but that seems to me like a more obvious payoff than this is what he wanted and what he thought he wanted. He doesn't it's just like it's irrelevant, like it's nothing. Everything that he was thinking about was just like it didn't mean anything. Like I feel like there's almost a harshness to that that's greater than him finding out that what it was was really bad. To do it in such a way, which I, you know, it's, it's, it wasn't even easy to do that, and they did find a pretty good way of ha having it be that. Because well, he was just standing not, there. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the the creature itself. I don't even know if it knew it was there. I don't think it did. It was just grabbing the marker. And it didn't he give was a shit. There. And he just gets killed during. It's um. You know, it reminds me of it's kind of like uh, that beat in House of Dragon episode three, where someone's getting fed to crabs, and they're like desperate for Prince Rhaegar. Sorry, Damon, sorry. Yeah, Damon. yeah, yeah. Save them, and when he's arriving, he's like, yes, kill them all, save us, yes, you're doing it, and he just lands on him and kills him. It's like, <laughs> wow. Like, yep. Um, sucks to be him, sort of thing. But yeah, uh, I don't know. I didn't see as much purpose with it, but the more I think about it, the more I kind of like it, and then the more I resist tweaks to it. Um, yeah. I think... Yeah, yeah. I'm, f I'm fine with it. Um, I... I might have it's kept the same exact convinced. idea, but had the actual thing that does it different. Um, like, but the, yeah, what they had is fine. I, I, yeah, I, I don't have any issue with it. Yeah. I had a weird dream where instead of sticking the wheezes with the syringe to kill them, Isaac sticks a blunt in their mouth. I might do it. They're coughing it off already. It would be so funny that the Leviathan is like, bro, I do not understand <laughs> what is happening. The Leviathan is a like teetotaler a... and just doesn't even know that that's... any drugs or alcohol of any kind defile its body. That could legit be a way to fuck with like an enemy in a, an environment like that if you found weed and like found a way to get that into the filtration system to fuck with the yeah. enemies. You give them psychedelics <laughs> so they can't really tell like what's going on. Yeah. They're impaired in a lot of, the, in a lot of ways. Uh, Sounds dank, dank AF. Hell yeah. Dank AF. I looked at Isaac's face during the intro crash. Very little panic. Seems odd. I haven't seen it. Uh, I think that throughout, there could be little tweaks and changes made to some of the things that he says or reacts. I think what they, what they did was good. I think they could have done better with it. Um... But it's just like a general sort of if they sprinkled throughout more of these little things, I think it would have helped a lot. Synthetic man has entered the chat. Whoa! Ooh. Yeah, he. I think he said this game was woke. So one bites the dust, I suppose. Yeah. What a shame! What a shame! 
I thought Dead Space's universe was post scarcity since humans can. No, it's not post scarcity. No, no it, it is very, no, no. very much in the era of scarcity. It is. Part of the point is that. scarcity. Yeah, they are, they are obliterating other planets to drain them of their resources to keep Earth going. At least that's. I remember reading that somewhere. Like, they are just. Yeah, that Earth has been uh, mined Earth stripped, to a crystal. Yeah. Earth is stripped, and so they go out into space and they mine planets and asteroids to get all the materials they need. And they have, uh, all, I don't know the, I don't know in the the lore how expansive uh, humanity is able to get with uh, like the shock drives. I don't know how far it lets them go. Um, but when you look at things like the sprawl, and there's probably moon base, Mars base, uh, you know, Mars colony, things of that nature. Um, I mean the fact that. It's called, you know, the, the, essentially the feds are EarthGov. Um, you know, you get the idea of there's, you know, all these other places and, you know, things. But I don't know, uh, in the lore, how, how far humanity has traveled outwards. There's many places they can. Where is the sprawl again? Is that on a moon or on uh, Earth? Titan. Titan. Titan Station. Oh, okay. Right. Is what Ooh, the Thanos is. is home. <laughs> yeah. <Wow. laughs> or he was a Titan. Since humanity can mine asteroids and entire planets for rare resources, I figured it was post scarcity. I guess that's why. It's as close to unlimited resources as you're gonna get outside of Star Trek replicators. No, it's not. No, it's not. Not that's at all. That's technology. I mean, like, that's not. Yeah, it's not resources. Like Mass Effect would be a good example of like the the mass in the mass drive. I mean, the the namesake of that series is a essentially an unlimited power source. And they've got logistic um, issues. Like you can mine a planet, which takes ages, by the way, and then you can send that all over to Earth. Ages. Did you know how long all that takes? Wait, what'd you say? It takes ages. Why well, you can you can match the planet <laughs> name? Yeah, it does take yeah. that. Yeah, in any case, what I'm trying to say is that just because you have the capability of mining a planet, that doesn't mean you're post scarcity. No, of course not. I mean, we have the ability to do crazy shit that, you know, yeah. a, uh, civilizations past couldn't do, but we are, Isn't that we like, are um, not. Isn't that like a saying? It's not, it's not a scarcity issue on Earth, it's a logistics one. Um, oh, well, it's, it's, I think it's something that's talked about with population, right? Like, that, that the population that is here could be sustained, it's just that we need to be more efficient, and we need to be more, yeah, we need to be, like, more energy efficient, more resource conscious, and how everything gets, uh, gets more around. renewable. It was part of why Falcon and the Winter Soldier was so embarrassing, right? Like, they establish in-universe, they are currently moving things in different directions, and then they're yeah. like... We're just gonna blow up a place where that's happening and move it to places we want. It's like, okay, that's the exact I mean, same thing. So thanks. <laughs> and then they're and like, then you could like, with one phone call move blah 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 to blah blah blah. And it's like I, you have no idea I, what I, you're talking I think about. The one, that bugged, the one that bugged me the most is you could move a border with a phone call. It's like, no, 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 you that's, can't. Because like, that's not gonna cause I, far more fucking problems dude, than it would fix. Well, it's just like you know. You, but, <laughs> I don't even know. It's like, where do we want to begin with how wrong that statement is? <laughs> like, just fundamentally to the core. Of there, you can just effortlessly move borders around just like that with a phone call. That whole show, it just like didn't want to deal with. That was meant to be the show that actually dealt with the repercussions of the snap. But the problem is that you would need to sit down for a while to really mm -hmm. develop like an think. understanding of what would happen after the snap. Yeah, and it's a big deal. People. You need to sit down and really think about it. It's, uh, it's the biggest deal. It would be like the worst thing that's ever happened in the history of Earth. Half the people disappeared for five years, presumed dead. And then everything that happened in the intervening five years of like economic collapse, war, famine, uh, and then all the people coming back. And it's like, well, shit, I mean, when, we're, when we were maybe starting to get to the point that things were adjusting to deal with half as many people... Now you have twice as many, you, you've got like 3.5 billion extra people who you need to feed and house and clothe and yep. and um, provide with like electricity. It's just, yeah. <laughs> um, bear with me on this one. Marxism <laughs> okay. could be here, Synthetic Man thought. I've never played this game before. There could be Marxism anywhere. The webcam felt good against his masculine body. I hate Marxism, he thought. The Daily Wire reverberated through his room, making it pulsate even as the e-fuel circulated through his powerful thick veins and washed away his merited fear of Marxism and gaming. 
Complete side note, I went to see Puss in Boots this week. Thanks to you guys' coverage. I loved it. Oh, I'm really glad you like Puss in Boots. That is a, um, that is a like top two idea. Movie. I like the idea of Isaac rounding the corner and watching a necromorph reading the Communist Manifesto. He's like, no! It's like, oh, interesting, interesting stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you are evil. <laughs> and it ends with, with subjectivity, you can make a game mean anything you want, he said out loud. That's the thing. That's, that's true. <laughs> like, it's a true. Yeah, it's true. Like if if nothing is if everything is nothing, nothing is everything, or anything can be anything. Then yeah, you can just change the references that exist to support your pre-existing <laughs> notions about something. I mean, um, the I don't know why everyone's forgotten what this used to be like. Uh, Dead Space comes out, and they'd be like, "Hey, so the whole world relies on one white man saving the world." And he goes well, through and he makes all the yeah. decisions. Everyone else is either evil or dies pathetically. He's the mm -hmm. only one that can defend himself. And the women, what is Nicole if not an object? She's just to be saved. And then, oh no, she's not even a character. Her death just matters to Isaac, as, as in, like, it's what he loses. It's not what she's lost. She's not even a person. Remember, remember that, guys? Remember, that's, how yeah, they used, that's what they used to do. Easy. That's it's the thing, yeah. That way. We you used to hate flip that. all of these things around. Pretty yep. much all this stuff. You, if, as long as you rephrase it in a different way, it goes from being totally woke to extremely, like, awfully politically incorrect. Oh, look, another male white protagonist who's straight. It's like, that shouldn't matter. What's wrong with you? You go, oh, look. <laughs> I look like a woman's here. here. Like a, a woman, woman is here, is, yeah. She's older. <laughs> or a woman is in that's charge. Pretty, that's terrible. Yeah, like, that's pretty no. cringe. All right. Does Halo Combat Evolved count as a remake? That was phenomenal for its time. Would it be fair to compare to Dead Space 23? I hope John gets to answer. Hey. Halo Combat Evolved. They mean I the, hope it counts as a remake? Of, Are they talking like, about anniversary? Yeah, that's what I figure, right? Or are they saying it's a remake of the RTS that they were planning on making instead? <laughs> like, because of <laughs> changes in development. I figured they're talking... So the thing is, is that Dead Space is a remake, whereas Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary was, like, a remaster. It had new graphics, but it was the same core, like, gameplay. It wasn't changed. It was the same core uh, code and combat and arenas. So I'm yeah, not sure that well they're quite comparable. It it literally had the original graphics as well. You could switch yeah, you between could them, tab. which was really cool. Yeah, and they did that with Halo Two Anniversary as well, which was neat. Yeah, yeah, I really like that. I think that's super cool. I actually prefer the original art style. I do there's as parts, well. Yeah, there's parts um, of the remaster that look nice, but yeah, yeah, there's a lot of parts in the remaster that I like as well. But there's just something about there's just there's something ageless about the older look. Yeah. Um, it has a very just... sleek, minimalistic style. It's got very clear silhouettes in all of the enemies and the buildings. The landscapes as well kind of have that uh, uh, an almost strange smoothness to them. Yes. It's uh it's it's a very nice looking game. And I think I think it's worth remembering, right, that that Halo Halo is a nice looking game even now, for as much as the technology has changed. I would it might be Halo Two looks better in terms of its raw fidelity, but I think I like the way that Halo One looks more. I don't know yeah. what it is. There's something almost uh, there's something serene about it. I think. Nostalgia, yeah. It's it's tough to say. Is it like this nostalgia I have for the you know original version of what it is? Or I'm not oh, sure because yeah. I think the Halo Two. I think Halo Two looks pretty good. What? I can't believe this has fucking happened. So. Oh, that you know the actress for the lady who, to be okay, I'll try and get this mini out faster so that it makes more sense. the The last of us episode that just happened, the actress who plays the the lady who's clearly the bad guy. Yeah. Um. So someone's been tweeting about how she's in the kind of shape that does not suggest post apocalyptic warlord. It suggests a life of luxury. She's tweeting a lot about how she's a she's a terrible bit of writing because she doesn't suit in any way, shape, or form. She wouldn't be in charge, a guy would be. And that she's she's trying to say she's too over argument. she's too overweight to be in that environment. Right? Oh yeah. Yes, overweight, famously associated with not being the leader of groups. Gotcha. Um, and she said, Where's Linda Hamilton when you need her? It's like, all right. So um fucking actress responded. Said, firstly, this is a photo from my cover shoot in Instyle magazine, not a still from The Last of Us. 
I'm playing a person who meticulously plans and executes an overthrow of Fedra. I'm supposed to be smart, ma'am. I don't need to be muscly. That's what henchmen are for. So she's basically coming with the retort that is kind of what we've already been laying out a whole bunch, which is that in order to be like an effective leader, more so than simply being the physically strongest person in the room, it's a lot more important which is that just you are not... the smartest person in the room. I mean, when was because... the last time that that was what determined who the leader was in human well, history? You have Napoleon to go back thousands go and thousands Napoleon and thousands of years. to the front line, you know? Like, Napoleon out there yeah, on post, the line. Like, post, I mean, the ancient the Egyptians show. didn't just pick who was the strongest person around. MacArthur was getting off the boats, like, you know, like when he said to Okinawa, he's jumping off on the boats Well, I just want to them. clarify, post-apocalypse like, doesn't mean the end of civilization. It means the breakup. It means like, after, it means a, well, it means ap anything after an apocalypse. Pretty much, That's yes. the thing. Well, yeah, 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 because uh, so of course it could mean could the end be, of civilization, but like, it we've could got be, loads but... of pockets of minor societies. They're still trying to run on, there's a reason why we end up with civilizations, humans, always. That's just it goes from the tri every the groups get bigger and bigger and bigger and we have to find different systems to control them all and stuff. All you get when you get to this point is that they have their system in place. They need leadership. They need people who know what they're doing to take control. It looks like I don't know, but it looks like she's the one that organized the rebels to defeat Fedra in that area. I think she's that's more, more than more enough to earn her the right to be the leader. They probably trust her as the leader. Yeah, well, she makes good need. tactical decisions. She has you a can't vested have a bunch interest of in organized people. That's the thing. Like a disorganized group of small groups of really strong people disorganized is not what it takes. You need you need broad organization. And if she was the person who was there and did it, which I can believe, then yeah, it's, it's just a logical because, conclusion. Um, we've gotten so little on her. She's only been introduced. We don't know anything about but her. I really. Wait until it's I get more information like, before I as, judge. Yeah. I guess it's the thing, it almost seems like all that's happened is you are a, a sort of soft-spoken woman. I wholesale reject the notion that you could be a leader. Just seems weird. I mean, we were joking about it earlier, but remember, the Allies were led by a fat dude and a cripple. So <laughs> maybe there's more to it than just, like, your well, ability it, to engage in like boxing matches. Leaders, right? It's not like... So, like, Eisenhower was getting off of, the, in like, in Normandy, that he was there on Omaha Beach with, like, the first wave of soldiers going in. Like, there's a difference between the role that is occupied by leaders and the role that's occupied by soldiers. Like, a leader yeah. is, off, is, is often not going to be there well, on, like, um, front line it's combat. A, it's a like, breed of person, course, too, right? Like, a strong man well, is not exactly. automatically a person who wants to lead a group of people. Well, yeah. Well, it's, remember, it's everybody, most people everybody plays aren't different leaders. Roles. Well, of course, by virtue most of the Most people aren't leaders, and most people don't want to be leaders. Yeah, I, I think I think what annoys me is it almost kind of downplays. It's like the soldiers have a role that they play and they play it well, and then you have like you know lieutenants or sergeants who have a different kind of leadership role with the soldiers and they play it well. You know, obviously if they're competent, right? And then like it just goes up the chain, and then she you've got only like needs different one or two men with guns that trust her to defend her, and then she's golden in terms of like if you're suggesting he some guy who's like I am stronger than her, I will beat her one. over the back of the head with a club and take over. It's like you're not going to want to do like, that when she's got. Yeah, people are really going to respect you. I guess it's kind of really weird that anybody would like. I don't know, man. Do you feel like often the president of a country would like beat the average soldier in like an arm wrestle? <laughs> like, what <laughs> does that mean anything yeah. by way of like who would end up being in a leadership position or not? Again, like I would especially, reference, um, I would reference Dread. Okay, Mama is the one that's in charge. Oh yeah, that's true. Uh, maybe, uh, oh yes, of course, yeah. And I don't know, you wouldn't call it post-apocalypse in that world, but it's definitely dystopic, and, and it would be like dystopia. A I think it's fair to say nightmare yeah. world where the strong will definitely have advantages over a lot of people, and she manages, I guess, to come out on top. I, I just, I don't find it unbelievable that a woman would be in charge, and furthermore, I don't find it unbelievable that we... a seemingly outwardly, um, I guess you would say, not ov overtly, like, hostile or uh, seemingly dangerous person could be the leader. Or alternatively, that that person might actually be dangerous, and that they might be disarming in the way that they look and speak. I've got a good uh, real life example of that. Like I've been, I've been on a lot of film sets and mm -hmm. uh, the position of first assistant director, if you know much about film sets, it's a yeah, very like right high pressure man, situation. Right? Uh, right hand to the director and they manage yeah. their time and they also, they answer questions, they keep every department in line. And more than half 
uh, the time, in my experience, they've been women. And um, the ones I know personally, they're extremely efficient, just the way their minds work. Like they can keep a lot of things in mind at once. They've got a good rapport with everybody. They, they know how to delegate. And well, that's the, uh, that's you wouldn't want anyone else in that position. So the idea that you have to be this big, strong, burly guy to take <laughs> command of a group of people, like it's dumb. Like people Isn't will listen to you if that, like... you know what you're talking about and you're smart and you're efficient with time and you're like courteous and reciprocal. The... She's probably got the, um, the kind and wholesome aspect down, but it's only going to be as relevant as you do what she says. Right. And yeah. in the regard to this character, isn't it the meme as well that like women tend to be pretty good at multitasking, whereas men tend to be pretty good at like very focused activities? I can guarantee almost Maybe. that the guy we saw with the gun, everyone's saying he should have been the leader. He could very well be the kind of guy who's like, um, just tell me where to shoot and I'll point. Like, yeah. I, I, is it just because he looks cool? He's got the beard and the gun yeah. and everything. <laughs> yeah. It's like he can fuck you up. Well, but, and then it's like, my head, I'm just like, child. oh, he's that kind of number two. He'll do anything. Well, I mean, probably. I thought, what, look at, look at Silco. Silco was not nearly as strong as his, like, lieutenant at all. He's like this scrawny little guy. You're actually so fucking right. Remember, remember the, uh, this, the juiced up, like, Hulk creature that stands next? He'll do anything That's that Silco right. tells him to do, but he's a fucking Hulk. Uh, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I, I I thought that we had a more sophisticated understanding of leadership. My strongest guy is just, Can we just see more of it, please? Can I please just see more of her performance? Well, more of yeah, her attitude everybody? It, it's, everyone's you need, jumping down this well, lady's throat. Let's put it this way. Our wait and see attitude with The Last of Us has yielded some pretty good results in terms of our predictions of where things were going to go. Why I'm they not made saying decisions they made. Age badly, like in terms of expectations. In fact, a lot of expectations have been fulfilled, like beat for beat. Well, yeah. Just give it a bit of time. It's not the end of her story yet. Like, there's still more to it. Yep. Peter Menser played Hammond in the original Xbox 360 version. He was the messenger in 300 who gets Spartan kicked into a massive hole. Hi, Ragu. Hello. Yeah. Also, check out the game Pizza Tower, you massives. Maybe we will. Uh, they took out the best parts of Dead Space 3 and saved that for this game, not gonna lie. <laughs> you talking about the side missions? That one happened. What exactly is in this game, do you think, that's from Dead Space 3 and not from 1 and 2? I haven't played a lot of Dead Space 3, so... Sorry, what, what was the first part of that question? Well, the, the, the whole... I'm asking the question, not them. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm curious <laughs> Look about... Look at me, I'm um, the question asking now. Yes, I am the question. I, 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 <laughs> what would you say is in the Dead Space remake that is directly from Dead Space 3 and not 1 and 2? Oh, uh... Outside of side missions is the only thing I was thinking. Yeah, I think this... That is about it. The side quest. The saying they took the best parts of Dead Space 3 out of it, I'd just be like, I'm curious what you think. Well, the best part about Dead Space um, 3, if I had to pick, is probably the, the weapon thing, like the customization. So it, um, which things are... Uh, sorry, I, I blanked for a moment. Uh, what what elements of, if any, in Dead Space Remake would have come from Dead Space 3? And not 1 and 2. From 3? Yeah, 3 specifically. Um, hmm... I don't know. Uh, there might be some elements of how you find individual upgrades for the weapons, and that might be somewhat similar to how you find specific upgrades for weapons in Dead Space 3, um, but I think that's the only thing that really comes to mind. I'm, I'm not certain, honestly. I'm not as familiar with uh, what, what 3 added that 2 didn't sort of add. I would, um, I'd, I'd have to make I have to go back. Well, because there was stuff that three would have added, but that wouldn't have been brought over to to uh, the remake. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was curious about. Fair enough. Um, you should check out the archived version of the Sterling Review, wherein he refers to Isaac as the generic white man. Yeah, we read that out. Yeah, we got to that. <laughs> we uh, apparently it was stealth uh, deleted. I I cannot believe that Dead Space was the game that had like this totally dichotomous like horseshoe shit going on with like the woke anti woke sort of thing. Well, it's crazy because that. that's like 
a lot of people want to talk about that on both sides. I don't. I, yeah, <laughs> I just want to. I I'm so tired of it. Can we just talk about the game? You're gonna have to wait a little longer Holy on that front, shit. I think, Fringy. Yeah, I think so. Dead Space you wait is an example. To get bored and move on. Dead Space is an example I would put in a parody story. I would have been like, wouldn't it be really funny if Dead Space, the game that's just you fucking annihilating fleshy monsters in a sci-fi horror game, like, and like people it, fought just, over it for being woke or chuddish or whatever. And think about like the reasons that were cited. Isaac, Isaac and Nicole's appearances displease me depending on what my <laughs> political perspective is. <laughs> What is that? And they're real people as well, so it's got an extra element of meanness yeah, to it. Gonna write is too generic white man, and the actress and Nicole, Nicole is too old. old. Yeah. Like, like people, if people want to talk about those aspects intelligently or even unintelligently, you know, fill your boots, whatever. But like, there's so many more interesting things to talk about. Never I heard that. Fill your boots. What a, no? is? I've never. I don't That's think I've ever heard that. I've heard it's, that. It's, it's, before, it's yeah. like then it's like go go ahead and do it. That yeah, kind of yeah, thing. but I, I just don't, I can't remember hearing that before. It's very likely yeah, Phil, I have, but according it's to, a uh, British thing. According I think. to Oxford, it is informal British. Yes, uh, okay. have or do as much of something as one wants. Most bars will be serving started. free food, so fill your boots. I guess it's to, so that's the example. Most bars will be serving free food, so fill your boots. I guess it means have so much that you could even stuff it in your your boots if you want to. To okay. take it home. That's interesting. Okay. Well, I like exactly how yeah. relates Fill to your boots, mate. The ditto. Yeet. It's just like you've eaten your foods, you put it in your shoes. <laughs> like, <laughs> you want a plate or a doggy bag type thing? You're like, nope, I'm just going to put it in my boots. Fill my boots with what exactly? What do you mean? With dignity. Um, yeah, like I just brought sandals and he brought wellies. <laughs> so he's like, oh, I get to have so much more. I can fit so much more in here. I, have a, I can eat a stew out of this. <laughs> nice boot stew. Um, so that's it for the Dead Space ones. Um, but if we can, we'll we'll chip away a little bit of the Streamlabs because they've fallen behind. Them. But a lot of these will be on random things, or they'll relate to just my streams. So they'll be theoretically not even conversation stuff. Okay. Um, there is a right. fell voice in the air. Oh crap! Metal's in the UK. See, this is how far back they've gone. I've, I've... <laughs> but metal's come and gone. Thankfully. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember the thing you said back in the EFAB God of War plot. The gods of God of War 1 can't hurt each other or some uh, strange rule you criticized. But the real reason was because Zeus forbade the war between the gods so Athena conscripted Kratos to protect Athens. Okay, uh, it doesn't matter whether or not he was the one who put it in line or if it's some weird magical thing that can't be done. The big criticism is the premise for the thrust of that narrative is that Ares is attacking Athena, or rather Athens. Yeah, and Athena's like, please stop attacking my like home place, you fuck. And the idea that Zeus is like, all right, got that's like someone is hitting you over the head with a fucking baseball bat, and then your parents say, hey, no one's allowed to shoot each other. <laughs> like, what? so I can continue hitting them, right? And it's like, yeah, <laughs> like, go ahead. like, okay, yeah, just no pow pow. Uh, Zeus, I don't know what Zeus is thinking. Uh, wouldn't Zeus stop Ares from doing what he's doing, or, or you know, I would uh, think that he would. And then it's like, and this was before he was an asshole, right? Yeah, this is before he was an asshole. So I, I don't understand <laughs> it. It's really strange. And the, the, I think I'm not trying to be mean, but I think they went as far as thinking, how do we make it so that Kratos is going to be the one that's hired to kill a god? It's like, what if the gods aren't allowed to hit each other, and he's like the most worthy mortal to do it? Yeah, there you go. Good luck making that make sense. <laughs> Tough one. Uh, now I know what you're thinking. If Zeus forbade the war between the gods, why is Ares apparently allowed to destroy Athens? The answer is because it's ancient times and the age of consent didn't exist. Wait. <laughs> like, oh my goodness. That's a good reference. <laughs> that is a good reference. Wait, is Freya a god? I forgot. Yeah. Uh... Anyway. I'd recommend the failed Divergent Quadrilogy for an EFAP movies arc. It was so bad, me and my GF took four hours to get through the first movie alone. So much insane Jeez. bullshit in it and the characters are hilarious too, especially people. Is four of those? I bet, Divergent like, only movies? the first one, maybe the first two, ever made the news or had any notoriety. But they like, made which, enough which to where they finished it and just, you know, didn't really bring them out to the public much. It's one of those, like, young adult stories. Are you, which, which, one Sorry. Sorry. This, which one are uh, we talking about? Divergent? The Divergent I thought, Quadrilogy. wasn't the thing that happened with them was that they were going to do four, but then they, because that was back when they did the part one, part two meme a lot. Um, 
And I think that they made part one for the end, but it didn't make enough money, so they just sort of stopped. So there weren't four. There was three, but they stopped. You don't think they may? Okay, I'm because I'm curious. I'm sure if that they... they didn't make the fourth one. They gave up, or there was going to be a plan to do it in like a different format, like for television or something, and then they just gave up. So that series is incomplete, if I remember correctly. Okay. Uh, Mola, will stream well, donations yeah, that was a... be read now? Yes. Hi, Rags. Hello. Riches for the gay boy. Oh, thank you. Little, I don't know if you knew this, but Unicorn Cum is farmed in, and then the super, super duper long Welsh town name. Terrible at pronouncing. Incredible. I wonder, it, it really makes you wonder what that town name means. It's like, like the place something. upon the hill, behind the river, beside the trees, where upon which we lay our hands upon the cocks of unicorns and stroke until it produces its virile uh, nectar from which we derive our uh, youth and joy, or something like that. I don't know. Um, a really strange thing happened to me in terms of media a while back. I was watching season three of Narcos, Mexico on Netflix, which is about the emergence of drug cartels and the drug wars in Mexico, which are ongoing to this day. Season three takes place in the 90s. One of the plot points is about how Bill Clinton signing NAFTA is going to help drug trafficking. In season three, they also introduced this new character who I was interested in and wanted to see where he would end up or if he would get killed off. Later, I was listening to Carl's show, Lotus Eaters, and they were talking about the U.S. border, and they mentioned that character the show just introduced in current day is alive and head of a cartel and has a $20 million bounty uh, on his head. So, yeah. Have you guys ever been spoiled for something by real-life news before? Or is that something that has only happened to me? Spoiled um, by real-life news? I, I remember I, I watched uh, Boardwalk Empire, and uh, I was getting so interested in some of the characters that I did look up what happens to them in real life, and then I was like, oh fuck, this is technically spoilers for the show. Ah, uh, yeah, I gotcha. Well, all those World War II shows, um, I, I, I do know which side wins, but uh, let's see. I, I don't know. I no, no examples come to mind right now. That probably doesn't happen much. Not gonna happen too often. Yeah. Definitely a thing that can. Uh, Chief Longbon of Mubly Boobleshi tribe. Is there any good chance of a real fap of Peter Jackson's Long Schlong when there's less going on? It'd be an experience for the ages. Ah, oh, it could be. That's very true. Long, maybe. Be considered hot for TV. I don't know. The Schlong de Peter. We shall see. Hello, thanks for years of entertainment. Thank you for getting me through university. Fringy, please check out Tonari no Totoro, the orchestra version, a piece from My Neighbor Totoro. I think you might like it. Uh, maybe. I've never heard of that. Uh, I'm guessing that's... I, no, I'm not even going to try and guess. I have no idea what that is. I'll post it there in case you're interested. Uh, sure. Have any of you seen The Menu with Ray Fiennes and Anna Taylor-Joy? I thought it was more compelling mystery than Glass Onion. We talked about it. Yep, there's we a, talked about it. <laughs> there's an EFAP on it, so don't you worry. And we do spend I'll a decent chunk of time like, on honestly. We talked about it probably a week. Yeah, it's like, oh wait, it's going to come uh, in way earlier. Pinocchio. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, I, I did saw come that. In before, yeah. quite, quite enjoyed that. It's funny. Pinocchio? Or... No, no, no. The Menu. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the I mean... Menu. Uh, how funny it is will really depend on the person, movie. I think. Yeah. Um, it wasn't funny all the way through, but it had its moments. This donation has been a long time coming. What I'd like to know is what piece of media is the most divisive among the EFAP hosts, i.e. something Mola might think is objectively good that Fringy and Rags thinks is bad, or some combination thereof. Um, things might be divisive before we go through it and watch it again but generally we fall on the same page when we qualify it it's just the, the way is, that we feel for certain things can be well i think something that I, something i'd say is we generally if we disagree we want to try and resolve that um yeah, we, instead yeah. of just going yeah agree to disagree we, we like really, to resolve it if ever have conversations devolve into any kind of toxic way they will usually always settle on like we figure out what what facts everyone's using sort them out yeah. and they're against stuff and we have a lot of time we spend a decent chunk of time together very much outside of the podcast um which i guess would make sense because <laughs> we do we actually yeah. like each other's company stuff talking about um, memes and stuff 
But point being, if, and this, by the way, was much more common when we'd first met, they'd be like, uh, you know, blah, 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 is, is good. Uh, have them, like, John like, Wait. You know, And then <laughs> we eventually rewatch those things, we discuss them, and then, you know, and that's it. Um, so it's actually hard to think of something we currently are on opposite sides on. Pretty rare. Um, well, it's just, yeah, we, we usually like to figure it out. I've, I've never been a fan of agree to disagree. It's like, feels like we're giving up. <laughs> like, I feel like... I feel like if we're both uh, trying to like figure out something and and try to become more correct, that we would try and resolve it, and 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 get somewhere. It might happen more with video games if we further go into those, because those could be a bit more difficult to work with in our system. I think we disagree more on video games than anything. Um, yeah, I think, I think that would... we tend to line up, but with video games, there is like some real <laughs> differences in uh in in values with regard to video games and. I think it's just because, like, yeah, there's more variables at play. It's not just narrative. You've got game design as well. It's, mm -hmm. like, a huge factor. Yeah, I there's liked the Dead things... Space remake, but... That's true, yeah. Yeah. Pretty, pretty iffy. And kind of woke, so... <laughs> um, Mola, one day you wake up to find yourself on Mount Olympus as Zeus. You hear your misbehaving and woke and snowy son has returned after breaking the laws of time and space. Bringing with him the destruction of Olympus. What do you do? Um, <laughs> force feed him beef and power tools until he's fixed. And send that's him back interesting, out. Interesting. That's a very that's a, that's a divinely inspired method of attack. Well, it's more so to just help him. That. He needs help. That like feels him. like something that would actually be in mythology, though. <laughs> and so Zeus decided to overfeed him with beef and, like, you know, I don't know, bicycle parts or whatever until he was able to, you know, until the ne'er do well became something, I don't know. Oh, yeah. Well, all right. That's a story, I guess. Uh, Efep Gang, what kind of fucked up pizza would you consume if you were forced to? One with tofu substituting for cheese, jam substituting for sauce, or cake dough substituting for pizza dough? I probably cake dough? Uh, I might go for the cake dough. That seems like the... I think I could deal with the cake dough one, yeah. Yeah, the cake yeah, dough. Yeah, the other two seem, seem like really it'd be, bad. it'd be like uh, a soft cookie sort of thing instead of I really like don't a want tofu crust. in exchange for cheese, ew. That would throw me off completely. Jam for sauce is still really weird, but cake yeah, dough for pizza dough, I could deal with that, I think. Yeah, the pizzas don't seem like a like a sweet tart kind of thing to have. Um so yeah, I'm gonna go with the the, the last one there. The cake. Atreus, father, who's Athena? Kratos, why do you ask? You've got her name in your sleep sometimes, Kratos, and Atreus, and that she conspires against you. Kratos, yes, Atreus. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Does indeed conspire. Uh, I feel like Glass Onion is the closest I've ever seen a movie get to levels of stupidity being like levels of dreams in Inception, where instead of it being a dream within a dream on multiple levels, it's stupidity within stupidity on multiple levels. But it's stupid on purpose, so they win. And you didn't understand it. Uh, the misread of people like Garbage Pile saying that Drinker tries to come across as a genius critic just blatantly baffles me. I thought the point of Critical Drinker's persona was that even a drunk idiot could make the criticisms he levels against media. You can't convince me that he's pretentious. You can't. It's the whole possible. thing is an everyman shtick. That's like the... He that's makes fun of himself like the... all the time. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's very self-deprecating. Trying to say he's pretentious is what you actually think is that uh, you're annoyed people think he's smart. What do you mean? Well, it's, yeah. it's smart in an unassuming way, right? Or in a, in a less uh, overt way. He's not claiming he's smart. <laughs> like, or, but if you but if you come to conclude he's smart, that's like yeah, that may well be the the byproduct of uh, feeling like he's making really strong arguments. But pretentious is kind of like you need to know how fucking smart I am. Like that's kind of makes way more sense to call me pretentious and drinker. Okay, when he talks about yes, vomiting you are all pretty over pretentious. the place. Uh, yeah, so Mola has a like, pretty high opinion of himself. I I think I'm literally the greatest thing that ever happened. To the whole planet. Yeah. At least top oh, five. Top five. Top five. Yeah, yeah, I can see it. Uh, well, see a, Brit a British accent adds another 50 IQ points as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. Sees new EFAB TV video on Velma. Oh, sweet. EFAB's covering something as cringe as Batwoman. Finishes video, looks at Batwoman. Perhaps I judged you too harsh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Batwoman's better than that show. It is, yeah. Velma's the worst show we've covered, right? It just is. Uh, I think oh, it well. has to be. 
It's the most foul show we've covered. Yep. Specific word to use. Uh, I remember <laughs> watching Markiplier Let's Play Dead Space in grade 9. Oh, we were all so innocent. Have fun, Mola. Well, I, yeah, I mean, the Let's Play era, man. That was... Um, can't believe Puss in Boots was as good as it was. By the way, the conscious cricket reminds me of Fringy. Like, that's how exactly Fringy would react to Big Jack Horner being an evil monster. Oh, no! <laughs> this is gonna be harder than I thought. The noble yeah. Phoenix. Yeah, he, he was great. It was a great choice. God, I love Jiminy Cricket. One of many, many things that were just in that movie. Mm-hmm. I forgot to say this during the Black Adam EFAB. When Satan was walking around, I looked at his chest and thought, Whoa, is that the Star of David on his chest? And then in another shot I realized, Oh, it's a pentagram on his chest, right? <laughs> he is Big Satan. Thing. I thought the 2022 Pinocchio was pretty neat overall. Not as good as Puss in Boots, but still a good watch. The only major problem I had with it was the scene where Pinocchio kissed Geppetto on the lips with full tongue action. It was fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a, that's a weird scene, man. Yeah. I'm glad they're, oh, uh, they kind of cut that out in the director's cut. So. Yeah, I wonder what he meant by that. And that's it for Streamlabs. And... Hey, all right. So, thank you all for listening. I uh, hope you're enjoying whatever it is you're watching before this, this and after this. Or, you know what? You don't have to watch anything. You could just be going for a stroll in the park. Fun. Uh, we'll see you guys in the next whatever it may be. Thank you very much for the Kind donations, messages. Toodle pip. Cheerio. Bye, everyone. Bye, yeah, bye. Goodbye, everybody.